Hello everyone. Uh, I would like to share my experience about treating this particular high risk pregnancies that is about RH aluminization. Uh, we received this uh, patient in for, uh, during her third pregnancy and the third month of her pregnancy uh, where uh, to just to brief up about her previous uh, uh, pregnancies where the first pregnancy was normal there was no concern but the as anticipated in this particular uh, case we will be expecting to have a complicated successive pregnancies so the thing which was diff different about this particular case was her second pregnancy happens to be a complicated one where uh, the baby was uh, uh, diagnosed to have an intracerebral hemorrhage or intraventricular hemorrhage at the 22nd week of her uh, gestation. So in the second pregnancy that had to be uh, monitored and then after the delivery also it was uh, monitored, supervised and then but unfortunately at uh, one year, after one year uh, the baby uh, died because of uh, related complications. Then when she conceived for the third time, she was determined to continue the pregnancy and she came to us at the third month. So it was very challenging for us to continue with this pregnancy because we had uh, anticipated the complication to happen, maybe a worse complication and maybe at a much earlier stage. So we had to prepare ourselves to handle her and navigate her pregnancy throughout being uneventful. So we did the intensive monitoring, the repeated uh, uh, testing with the ICTs and the titers and everything was done. Then immediately the scan showed uh, uh, the uh, features of uh, fetal anemia. So it was a challenge for us to prolong the pregnancy up to 35 weeks because we wanted to overcome the premature component. So with coordination our, with our fetal medicine department, Dr. Pundalik, we planned an intrauterine transfusion which went on very fine and following which we could take some time again we had to monitor her closely because repeatedly the the uh, fetal uh, the anemia was worsening and then uh, with intensive monitoring we took up the pregnancy up to 35 weeks and then we delivered her following delivery the pediatrician dr mario came in and uh, he had continued the the management of the newborn with uh, two exchange transfusions and uh, uh, the baby became better with uh, the bilirubin levels and the hematocrit levels, everything they improved, and uh, the, now the baby is uh, has got discharged with a completely stable condition. The mother is also uh, stable condition. So, Mrs. Kavita was referred to me at around 32 weeks uh, by Dr. Samina, saying that uh, the indirect Coombs test has come positive, and we need to evaluate for fetal anemia. So, ultrasound scan was done for her, and we found out that baby was. Uh, severely anemic by doing the MCA middle cerebral artery Doppler studies and also there was hepatosplenomegaly in the fetus. So the patient and her husband were called in. They were counseled regarding the uh, need for intrauterine transfusion as the baby is only 32 weeks because the prematurity can lead to uh, adverse outcomes if at all we deliver the baby and uh, transfuse uh, now. So we thought we really can do that intrauterine transfusion and buy some more time and we can deliver around 35-36 weeks when the prematurity component can be taken into uh, taken care of. So the uh, cross match sample from the patient and uh, the equation for the blood uh, which is a special uh, blood which is required O negative irradiated and leukocyte depleted blood was needed for the intrauterine transfusion which uh, we uh, arranged from the KMC Manipal uh, blood transfusion unit and the immunohematology department. So the blood was arranged in a span of three days and on 5th of March, uh, the decision was done, uh, taken to transfuse the blood in the noon. So around uh, when we did the fetal blood sampling, the fetal hemoglobin was around 5.5 gram percentage, which uh, was a severely anemic fetus. So uh, around the requirement uh, was done for the amount of blood to be transfused by a calculation based on the estimated fetal weight and the gestational age of the fetus which came to around 85 ml and the same amount of blood was transfused uh, to the fetus. The fetus and the mother withstood the procedure well and the post transfusion on day one uh, we again checked the baby for the well-being and also the Doppler studies were done and everything was uh, settled. The baby was uh, doing well and uh, then the weekly follow-up was done. 
uh, for the monitoring of the middle cervical artery Doppler and the fetal well-being and uh, around 35 weeks again the fetus started showing signs of severe anemia so the de decision was taken to deliver the fetus and uh, transfuse postnatally and uh, after the, the uh, delivery I think uh, there was two exchange transfusions done and the baby was uh, discharged after a week of the delivery and the baby is doing well. It gives me great joy to inform uh, my fellow friends and uh, viewers that at KMC we were successful in saving a child's life who would otherwise in the uh, times in a decade ago would have not survived. Uh, this is an interesting case where the uh, mother developed antibodies against her own baby's blood in utero. So uh, this is called as RH incompatibility in other terms where the mother is of negative RH group and the baby is of RH positive. So the mother tends to develop these antibodies which destroy the fetus in utero. Now this, this happened to uh, our mother who presented here at uh, just 34 weeks of gestation and uh, uh, the obstetrician Dr. Samina had rightly picked up the uh, case and had referred it to the fetal specialist uh, in-house Dr. Pundlik Baliga who then diagnosed fetal anemia and uh, the hemoglobin which was it was very low as low as 5. So uh, immediately he coordinated with our transfusion specialist Dr. Bhavani Shankar uh, and uh, they were able to arrange O negative leuco depleted irradiated uh, blood at the earliest and uh, uh, expert procedure of in, in utero fetal transfusion was done. So with this the baby's hemoglobin, the fetal hemoglobin improved and uh, uh, the baby's parameters were within normal limits and as it was born premature baby was first noted to not only have anemia baby was very pale not only that also had breathing difficulty hence uh, the breathing was immediately supported with the help of a continuous positive airway pressure and uh, uh, because it was a known case and a well equipped state of the art blood bank facility was available in house the blood was kept ready before the baby was born. So as soon as the baby was born, the baby was noted to have pallor and the blood investigations showed a very low hemoglobin as well as high jaundice values at the birth. So an immediate exchange blood, the full blood of the baby would have to be taken out and replaced with a fresh blood in order to break, to stop the breakage of the infant's blood. So this procedure had to be uh, repeated two times over the next 12 hours in order to stop the breakage of the fetal blood and the baby did a fantastic recovery and we are happy to say within uh, uh, 7 days the baby could be transferred out of our neonatal unit into the mother's hands and uh, after observing for the next 72 hours and the hemoglobin as well as the bilirubin level being stable the mother and the baby were discharged with all joy and happiness. Thanks to the team at uh, KMC, all the facilities and the multidisciplinary approach, uh, uh, we were able and uh, successful in bringing out uh, this uh, little infant. Okay, hello, uh, my name is Kavita. Um, when I was uh, four weeks pregnant, I uh, came to uh, KMC Jyoti Circle uh, to uh, Dr. Samina ma'am because I uh, already consulted her in my previous pregnancies. So uh, when I came, uh, she uh, as I'm a negative, uh, I have a negative blood group. So uh, she closely monitor uh, everything that uh, my vitals, uh, my BP, my uh, sugar, and everything means the blood uh, test. She closely monitor that test, and uh, my pregnancy went smoothly. But um, the problem came uh, during the uh, 31st week uh, that. Uh, uh, my means that fetal anemia problem came and we were very scared uh, because of this problem but uh, Dr. Samina ma'am and uh, Dr. Pundalik sir and Mario sir uh, they counseled uh, us and uh, they uh, calm means uh, they calm our mind and uh, we started our journey that intrauterine transfusion and all we uh, were 
are aware of uh, these things actually but uh, they counseled her very well and uh, we were ready for the treatment so the treatment went uh, successful and after that uh, uh, during 35 weeks uh, uh, i delivered a baby boy uh, uh, and they did uh, uh, some transf blood transfusion outside also and uh, everything went so well and uh, now uh, i am happily uh, living uh, um, today uh, from the hospital i am discharged today so i um, i am very grateful and thankful to all the staff uh, all the staff here uh, the nursing staff is so good uh, that they helped uh, me very well and the delivery uh, you know went very well and the recovery uh, time that five days it went very well and the nicu staff um, i must say that they are very 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 uh, what um, they are very helpful and uh, they helped me very uh, much because uh, i was very scared uh, seeing my baby in the nicu and all but uh, they uh, they did very well those who are having high risk pregnancies or uh, this kind of problems please uh, come here uh, in the kmc hospitals they are very 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 uh, experienced and uh, they are very uh, very uh, helpful and uh, you uh, they are very uh, up to date they have all up to date equipments and up to date uh, you know facilities are available here so you can come uh, and you can uh, means uh, take uh, the help of uh, kmc hospitals thank you so much